Hello everyone, welcome back. So today I'm going to be talking about how bones are formed or how they're developed or how they're made. So let's get into it. So the term ossification, also known as osteogenesis, basically means the process by which bone tissue is made. If you haven't already seen the um, histology slide, uh, specifically the connective tissue, go ahead and watch that. So bone development starts in the second month of life, where I'm talking about in utero, in, in the womb, and it continues until early adulthood. I'm also going to be talking about um, postnatal growth after the baby's born, the bone has to develop. So there are two processes that are involved, the endochondral ossification, and then we have the intramembranous ossification. So for endochondral ossification, one of the things that you're going to see is the word endo, um, is the word chondral. Chondral means chondrocytes, which is for cartilage. So this is telling us that we are going to have cartilage as our mold or you know a model that this bone will form so we're going to have to break down cartilage especially hyaline cartilage which is where we're what we're going to be using not elastic not fiber cartilage to we're going to break them down um, before ossification will take place so another thing i do want to talk about mention is that cartilage does not become bone because sometimes we think that oh um as it hardens or calcifies, then it will become bone. No, just like apple would never become an orange or an orange would never become an apple. There are two separate types of tissues. So one of the things we're gonna see is at the primary ossification center. This is the first place we're gonna start seeing bone collar forming around the diaphysis. The diaphysis is the shaft of bone. So we're gonna see it around the diaphysis of the hyaline cartilage model. We have a mold which gives us the shape of what the bone will look like. Another thing I do want to mention is that we are going to use endochondral ossification to make our long bones, like you, the bones of your legs, your thighs. I'm going to be talking about what they're called as we move on. And the second step that you're seeing here is that, that the cartilage calcifies in the center of the diaphysis and then you start to see the cavities cavities um, which would then later become the spongy bone of the bone marrow so you start seeing that in the second stage right here in the third stage you start seeing the periosteal bud what does that really mean it, it gives a way for blood um, vessels to come in sometimes when we look on the outside portion of bone, we think it's avascular, that it doesn't have a lot of blood supply. But you know, if you remember if, um, in the introduction to ANP, all the blood in your body is made in bones, okay? So we would expect um, the bone to be very vascularized. Um, so the periosteal bud invades the internal cavities and you can now see a better form of the spongy bone. This bud, even though we're only seeing one vessel there, here we're going to see some blood vessels, nerves, um, red bone marrow, osteo osteogenic cells, which are the ones that are going to be needed to make these bones. We're also going to see osteoclasts to break down the bones, which will, you know, make sure it's smooth. This is how bone is smooth, has a, a definite shape to it. And the fourth step, in the fourth step, we're going to see the diaphysis elongating, getting longer, and we start seeing the medullary cavity forming. And during this step, we start seeing the formation of the secondary ossification center, which is seen at the um, epiphyseal. The epiphyseal will be the ends of the bone, and we have two ends, one on the top, one on the bottom. The one on the top, that will be proximal. We went over this. Proximal means um, closer to the one at the bottom will be distal. So we're going to see the secondary ossification center taking place at the proximal epiphysis and then um, at the distal epiphysis. So the last step or the fifth step, which is one that will continue from childhood to adolescence, you can see the epiphysis ossify. So when the calcification is complete, the hyaline cartilage will remain in two places. At the ends, all right, at the ends at the um, 
um, where we see articular cartilage here. Articular cartilage is not another new cartilage. The word articular, you're gonna be hearing me say this a lot, and usually when we say to articulate, in English it means to be you know, well-spoken, but in anatomy and physiology, um, in, um, in medicine, it means to join or to connect. All right, so we're gonna see the remnants of the hyaline cartilage at the ends of bones. And then we're also gonna see at the epiphyseal plate, this cartilage here at the epiphyseal plate, which is between the epiphysis and the diaphysis, this will allow the bone to grow longer. You know, this is how, you know, you're able to grow from baby to an adult. Um, we're gonna be talking about when this uh, fuses, then that means that the end of growth. At the ends of your bones, especially your long bones, you're going to see cartilage, and this prevents bone from rubbing against each other. Usually when people talk about arthritis, it's usually when you don't have cartilage in that, in that joint anymore, and then you have the bones not just rubbing against each other, but you also have to understand you have nerves passing through, and that is very painful. So the second type is going to be the intramembranous ossification. So this is what happens in the first step. So here, we're not going to use cartilage as our mold or as our model. In the first step, we're going to see the ossification center developing in the fibrous connective tissue. Bone is a connective tissue, right? So we start seeing the fibrous connective tissue. So what you're seeing here is the mesenchymal cells, which are also known as the stem cells they start to cluster and differentiate into um, what we call osteoblasts. Osteoblasts are bone building cells and they form an ossification center here. In the second step, you start seeing that the osteoblasts can um, continue to secrete an osteoid, something that kind of looks like bone, but it's not really bone. It will later calcify in a few days. And another phenomenon that, we're, that will occur here is that the osteoblasts, they get trapped they get trapped, there's nowhere to go. And then this will prompt them to become mature. And then they've developed into what we call osteocytes, which are mature bone cells, all right? These are those spikes um, cells that you're seeing right here. And in the third step, we start seeing the immature um, spongy bone and periosteum forming. The periosteum is going to be like a wrapping, a layer that we have um, surrounding living bones. So um, you would not see that in a dead bone or maybe in the you know bone model that you have in lab. Most of the bones would not have that. But the periosteum, basically, again, so that the, the muscle and the bone do not have direct contact with each other. So we start seeing here the accumulating osteoid, the one that looks like bone, being laid down between the embryonic blood vessels and then forming this honeycomb structure that we call trabecula. Trabeculae um, of spongy bones. So this is these are the holes that we see in the bone marrow. And we also see the periosteum, like I said, forming due to the vascularized mesenchyme condensing on the external surface of the bone. And the very last step, the trabeculae are remodeled and replaced with compact bone. Compact bone is hard bone. And the immature spongy bone can be seen in the center. And this will later become a mature bone that will eventually fill the red bone marrow. So lastly, this is what uh, um, those bones will end up becoming. So endochondral ossification is used to make our lung bones. And I don't want you to just think the limbs only, like your fingers, your palms, or carpals, those are considered long bones. I'm still gonna um, talk about I'm still gonna talk about you know, the types of bones that we have in the human body. And the intramembranous ossification are mostly made for flat bones. Flat bones like the bones of your skull, you know, the bones of your clavicle, your scapula, um, and, the, and the chondral ossification, like the bone of your femur, the bone of your tibia, your fibula, your humerus, and so on. So that will be it for how bones are formed. All right, thank you. Um, I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.